Welcome back to Feed the City, and behind me you see the glorious excavator machine. It's uh, it's a pretty badass machine. We've powered it. We've got the bucket wheel going, and it all works. It's pretty exciting, but the one thing we want to make sure we do is create a big space to store all of the coal, because this thing's going to go through a lot of different kind of blocks. One of the good things about this thing is it will collect only coal. There'll be some diamonds and some emeralds as well, but it's not like a quarry. It's not going to collect a lot of random junk that we don't need, and that's really good for us. But this episode, we're going to focus on two things, the first being uh, Malice's doors, because it's about time we got some really cool looking doors and also we're going to be making a colossal chest and uh, that sounds like a pretty fun thing to do anyway so let's jump in right now well slime boots have redefined how i get across the map this is amazing it's so good i love it i love it to bits okay so the first thing we're going to do is a colossal chest now these are pretty easy to make i think i can't find much documentation on them but they don't seem to have that much to them you basically need a core a core block, which is a chest wall and a piece of iron, I suppose, depending on what kind of chest you're going to make. You can also make copper ones, iron ones, silver ones, gold ones. Oh, but gold ones are expensive. Man, we don't have that much gold. So we'll start off with a, a normal wooden chest and see how this bad boy works. So we're going to make chest walls, a chest core for the core of it, I suppose, and an interface, because we can maybe uh, use the interface to pipe out of it, or perhaps even use conveyor belts to take it down to the farm. But we basically just need a big place to store all the coal to begin with. So anyway, let's get started. You basically use any old log in the middle and planks around the outside to make the walls. And we know how to make the core. So that's an iron ingot and a chest wall. And then the interface is pretty simple too. It's just a chest wall and cobblestone around the outside. Well. That's all pretty simple. Let's go over to the barn and see if we can make this. So we'll need logs, or just wood, I guess. Wood. Um, and why not use fir wood? We've got like so much of that. This looks good to me. So we're gonna make eight. Eight bits of these. Sure, whatever. That should be enough. And then we're gonna put wood around the edge to make the colossal chest wall. And we're gonna make, I don't know, like we need a few bits for the core pieces, so 64 sounds good to me. So now that's in position, we're gonna need some cobblestone, old cob, wow, 4,000. That goes around the edge, the chest wall goes in the middle, and that gives us the interface. We'll make one of those. And then of course, last but not least, do we have any ingots? Iron, yeah we do, okay, perfect. So we're gonna make one of those, put this back in here and that should be the chest core. So now we have the chest walls, the chest core and the chest interface. Now let's test this out down here before we put this into action upstairs. Now from what I've read, these can be almost any size up to probably a maximum, but I don't know what that maximum will be. So we'll start off with like just a simple, uh, put the core there, sure. A simple three by three chest. Now I think it can be hollow. I think it might have to be hollow. And once you complete it, I think it becomes the actual chest. Whoa, yeah, it works, sweet. How much space inside here? Wow, this already has three pages of stuff. Let's just count this. So, oh yeah, oh my God, this is, this is pretty colossal in itself. I think maybe a three by three is gonna be big enough. It looks very cool as well. And it's got the chest core down there. So if we remove one of these, with a paxel, I suppose, what happens if we put an interface here instead? Still the same thing, still a big chest, but we can now interface with um, this little block here. And I guess that means you can pipe into it and out of it through this block, but I don't know to be sure. Okay, well that's the theory out of the way. Now let's go put this into practice. But also what we're gonna need is some conveyor belts to get our coal from A to B. The excavator automatically pushes out the coal that it digs up. So this should be a pretty sim simple build. And actually it's gonna let me get a little bit more creative with the um, build of the excavator because I, I wanna have like a, like a ramp that comes down from the excavator and drops off items into the chest. Let's see if we can get all this to work then. 
Oh, baby. Now, the excavator is turned off at the moment. That means the lever's been pulled because we, we don't want to waste any coal. We went offline. I went to, to bed. I woke up and I thought, you know what? A brand new Minecraft day. Let's do it. So here we go. How much space here do you reckon we have for a chest? Um, probably, honestly, like maybe, maybe a three by three will do for now. So that's the base core, but we're going to need to also get rid of some of these. Be a cause. Running out of scaffolding, actually. There's one. There's another. Oh, I'll have a sleep. I don't want to get creepered. So here we go. We're going to need a few more of these uh, steel scaffolding for sure. It's going to be a bit ugly, but for now we're just going to use cobblestone to uh, to fill the gaps. So I think this means we can put the interface here, walls around the rest of the bits, and bam. It looks to be operational. Let's put that to the test though. So we're going to come top to bottom. And let's see if this inputs into the chest. Everything should be powered up. So let's see what happens. Ow! Oh man, I, I, I keep forgetting how, how electric this whole thing is. Flipping the switch has really done a number on me. Okay, so out comes the coal. Dig, dig, dig. Whoa, diamonds. Nice. Supposed to be emeralds. There, there we go. Emeralds as well. I have a chimney. I'm getting a bit peckish. And it looks like this is all feeding into the chest perfectly. Oh man, I love it when a plan comes together, because honestly, that's very, very rare. Whoa, mama. Now this is gonna store a lot, a lot of coal. So we've already got one diamond ore, emerald ore, and coal ore. And the great thing about the diamond ore is, we can take this out, put it down, and if we're lucky, when we use our hammer on it, which has luck on it, we might get more diamonds. We didn't get more diamonds, but still, you know. Okay, so colossal chests, boom, that's it. You can make bigger chests, you can make different colored chests, and I imagine uh, the different ranks of chests, like gold, diamond, they probably have uh, different properties. They could probably hold more chests, and we're getting enough diamonds now, probably, from this thing. We could probably make ourselves a colossal diamond chest. Man, it's, it's good to know that diamonds, not a problem anymore. Now it's time to look into Malice's doors. So it all starts with a door factory. That's this thing here. We'll need an iron door, some redstone, and a piston. Luckily we have a piston. In fact, can we just shift click this? Yeah, we can. Does it actually make an iron door for us? Wow, we had an iron door left over. Okay, cool. Right, so we've got a door factory now. And um, we'll put this down here for the sake of easiness. Eventually I want to move a lot of our operations into here anyway. So the door factory can go here. Right click, here we go. Ooh, okay. Um, how does this work? You can have redstone behavior, so it only opens if you get redstone to it. That sounds pretty cool. In fact, imagine this. Imagine like our railway bridge, our railway tunnel has giant doors on it. And then we have like a redstone detector track. And anytime a cart goes over it, it opens the doors. It's a pretty good idea. So we're going to leave things as basic. We're going to keep double doors. Movement. You can have it rotate, slide, vanish, vortex. I want to make a vortex door. Materials. So let's try and make a fir door. We've got lots of fir wood. Actually, you know what I love? I love some wisdom wood. So let's make a wisdom wood door. Perfect. So how does this work? Do we put the different material? Right, okay. Oh, oh, oh. So we can have, let's say, the top block and the bottom block is wisdom wood, and the frame can be cobblestone. Sure. Modify. Door to modify? No. Digicode. Oh, oh, no way you can put you can put a lock on your door, so you have to do a, a specific code to get in. Pretty cool. Okay, so this looks this looks okay. A standard door with a sound. What? Rusty door, wooden door, silent, shoji door, pneumatic door. I like the idea of that. So it's it's, it's a vortex that sounds like a shoji door creates it. So this is, wait, so this is just a, a regular door now. How do I make a bigger door? Whoa, okay. <laughs> okay, that's a weird, that's a weird look. 
So this gets us some pretty interesting and basic uh, two block doors. How do we make a bigger door? So we want some big old barn doors. Uh, what? Which ones of these look like big barn doors? Large spruce double doors. So we definitely need the basic wood types. Well, we definitely have spruce and I reckon that's a good look for the barn. So let's see if we can make some spruce doors. Yeah, get rid of all these. Easy. There we go. So now we have large spruce double doors. Let's see how these work. Now I'm worried because maybe these are actually not big enough. Oh. They're very cool, but they're also very small. Ah, where? Where? Ah, you know what? It looks like that's the limit, the, the, the limitations of Malice's doors. That's a, a little bit of a shame because I don't I don't want to shrink down the size of the barn. I like I like how big this bad boy is. He's a nice nice big opening and I don't want to have to put down uh, doors like this and uh, fill in the edges around. Maybe we will though. Maybe we will because it's not too bad. I'll just need some more fir wood around the edge. Finish the job here with some wisdom wood planks. And we can worry about that big window later, but for the time being, you know what? These doors are pretty snazzy, so I'm going to keep them. We're going to keep them for the time being. But that's not the only way you can do doors. So there's also another mod. I think it's Funky Locomotion. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, let's try out um, Funky Locomotion to see how this works. So we've got frame blocks. Oh, Invar. Who <laughs> uses Invar? No! How do we make Invar? Invar is made in a smeltery. Molten Invar is a mix of alloying, iron and nickel. Okay, well we have nickel, we can make some Invar. And actually, we, we accidentally made some Invar I think over on the city, so it might be a good way to put that to some use. So let's make a crafting table near to the storage scanner, just because there's, it's, sometimes it's quicker just to use a normal crafting table. That'll do there. It's got a block above it, but that doesn't seem to stop it. So we'll need iron ingots. Well, we have some nuggets already handy. There, there, and an ingot nugget in the middle. And we get a wrench! So now we have a wrench from Funky Locomotion. This isn't letting me do anything at the moment. So to prepare, we'll just empty this space for the moment, because we're going to try Funky Locomotion here as well, just to see if it works. So we want to make some invar now. Let's go and see if we can find some nickel. Now, I do remember that up, up on the mountain, there was a nice big deposit of nickel. I don't want to dip into that, because Doing a whole multi-block structure so that I can uh, make a cool doorway. That's that's a bit outside of what I fancy doing. What, three nickel here. There must be some in the old uh, old muck muck muck. Let's go see if we can find any in the uh, in the barn. Nickel is typically something I won't pick up because I, I never really know what it's used for. But now I do, so I'll get it. Nick, there's no nickel or here either. So it looks like it's about two iron to one nickel. Yeah, one nickel, two iron. So six iron will get us 12 nickel. So it looks to me that this recipe gets us eight frames. So it's it's pretty uh, pretty efficient. Oh, almost complete. Nice. So we'll need a bunch of nuggets. Invar along the top and the bottom. Eight frames. Boom, another block. And this should be enough for... Oh no, it's only going to be enough for another eight frames. We're missing one more ingot if we want to make... Uh, make some more frames. So let's try these out. Now, not only do we need the frames, but I think we also need the frame pusher, puller, boosters, whatever. Oh, oh, okay. So we need to make an industrial machine chassis, which means getting a simple machine chassis. Grains of infinity, <laughs> what? Burn bedrock and you get grains of infinity? What kind of madness is this? Oh man, okay. So it looks like um, these things are not easy to make. We need Invar, which we've got. Diamond we also have. Industrial machine chassis seems hard to make. Enderium nuggets are made by smelting ender pearls, I believe. No, Enderium grinding balls? So Enderium is resonant ender. Oh, okay, so you mix platinum lead and resonant ender, which is melting ender pearls. And that gets you Enderium. Okay. 
That's all pretty complicated now. So we've pretty much written that off. There's no way we can we can go through that right now. That's a massive pain in the butt. Okay, so it looks like we're not gonna be using funky locomotion to uh, to make this anytime soon. That's a shame because I had so many plans for like uh, a missile silo uh, and things with like opening doors and stuff. But there we go. I'm gonna have to do my homework off camera, work out how those things work. There's another thing that I wanted to do as well. Now you might have seen or probably been triggered by the fact that my wooden posts look ugly as hell. I mean, look, I've put literally the wire relay on top of the immersive engineering post and, I'm, and I've never been quite sure how you fix that until Duncan showed me that simply right clicking adds a post to the side. So what we can do now is move these wire relays to the side of the posts and that's just going to make things look so much better. It also means we can probably put powered lanterns on the other parts, but we'll collect these for now. Man, look at that. Yeah, it just looks so ugly. What were we thinking? But well, that's something that I can go, go around and do to fix things up. Man, this really is just like a caretaking episode on the farm, but you know what? These, these Malice's doors are pretty sweet, so that's okay. We have some problems though that maybe you guys can help me diagnose. So one of the big problems is our industrial foregoing machine over here. It works fine with all of these crops, but when it tries to mess around with the wheat, what we get is just the wheat gets harvested, but nothing interacts with it. It doesn't get pushed down the conveyor belt, doesn't get moved anywhere. But also something else I discovered is the fact that this machine here has a catchment range that is so big, it's paused because we're full on beans at the moment but look at the working area of this machine. It's huge, in fact, it's so big, it fills up this area here. So I need a place for carrots and potatoes, and what I'm gonna do is add a little farm here that that thing can interact with that will grow carrots and potatoes. Fingers crossed it doesn't do what the, uh, the farm does to this wheat though, and I can't quite explain why. But to prove that point again, we're gonna come inside the barn, and uh, I have a, ooh, whoa. There we go, ooh. One of these has wheat in it already, but it shouldn't have that much wheat in it. There we go. So we've got 57, no, we've got 1,017 tea leaves. We've got corn, which have been on the same plot. We've got 1,400 of those. We've got like 4,000 or something chili pepper, something crazy. Not as many walnuts and limes as I'd like, but we've established that the trees that we've got are very, very slow. However, the wheat is really, really, really slow. So I need to work out what's going on with that and how we can fix it because at the moment it's just not pulling the numbers that we want. We expect more wheat from our crops. So we need to uh, diagnose and fix that problem ASAP. And also I need to do some caretaking in terms of the meat factory. It's kind of up and running but it's a very 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 slow experience because most of the time if we go over there and have a look one of the problems we have is that the animals, um, the animals turn into adults. That's okay. But still, it's a very slow experience. Um, it could possibly be because the cows are so busy they can't breed. So let's just chop up some of them. There we go. In fact, the feeder... Oh, no, the feeder's got loads of wheat. So maybe these cows will start breeding now. Oh, the sheep definitely have. Wow. Oh, yeah, that's back in action. We're back in business. And the babies are getting sucked out. But the thing is... Um, oh, I'll have a sleep. I don't want to get creepered in the animal farm. So this is going to be a very slow process because it takes a long time before the animals will go into the catchment range of, uh, of this block here. Although maybe I can fix that. Maybe if I just um, move the fence to the back over here. Yeah, we'll try that. Let's dig up these fences. We'll put a fence post here and a fence post here. And I think that means if we uh, dig these blocks, the animals won't be able to escape. But actually, thinking about it, if they can, you can just put some fence here and they should be stopped from escaping. There we go. Perfect. Flawless. So now whenever an adult goes over that block there, he's going to get sucked through. Let's see if we can push somebody to their doom. Go on, little pig. Yeah, there he goes. The black hog rides the conveyors of death once more. Up you go, my friend. Oh, flawless. Rip and pep, my friend. We got some meat and I think what looks like tallow out of that. And now let's follow this pig's journey. 
his ultimate journey to the warehouse. Oh, man, there he is. That's all that's left of the Black Hog. And now we'll move over to the barn and watch it come up into the barn and into the um, storage chests. Should pop up any second now. It's been underground for a while. There's some tea. There it goes. There's the pig. Ah, there it goes. And boom. So we have now three raw pork chops, three mutton, and two tallow. So what's tallow good for? Whoops. Tallow is used to make candles. Candles, and that is absolutely it. What's a candle used for? A candle is used to make different color candles. Okay. So we can make candles out of tallow. Good to know. But that's it. There we go. So this episode, we messed around with colossal chests. We did some uh, malasis doors. Worked out that they're not as cool as we were hoping. I thought you could make some massive, massive multi-block doors. Turns out, uh, only seems like you can make the smaller ones, like the ones back here. These are still big doors. I do like them a lot. But it's definitely not something that can replace every single gap that we have. For example, uh, but we could certainly uh, use this on the house. Put some doors in the house. Uh, and try those out. Well, thank you for watching, guys. I've been Shin, and this has been Feed the City. Next episode, I'm not quite sure what we're going to do. I think we might try and uh, get the coal down from the excavator up on the hill. You can see it in the background there. Down to the train station, because that means we can finally start putting food on the railway tracks and taking it to the farm. That's exciting. And then that means that we can start building restaurants in the city, which is a big milestone for us. Anyway, until next time, guys, take care.